In this video, we're going to look at this function here, look at this graph. We're going to identify what the function is, like what the equation of the function is, and we're also going to identify the domain and the range of the function. Now, um, this function goes from the point negative 9, negative 9, up to the point 3, negative 5, and then it changes direction and goes down to 6, negative 6. So uh, let's start with the domain and range because that's really the easiest part. Uh, let's re remember what the domain is. The domain of a function is all the possible values of the x variable or the, the independent variable. Okay, so every point on this function here has an x coordinate that is, well, since the furthest left it ever gets is negative 9, and since the furthest right it ever gets is 6, all the x-coordinates of the points on here are between negative 9 and 6. Okay, so we're just going to write the domain is between negative 9 and 6, and I'm just going to put x in between those two things. Easy enough. Now let's look at the range. Okay, the range of the function is all the possible values of the y uh, um, variable, also known as the dependent variable. Okay, and so now let's look at uh, this. We have we start down here at the point negative nine, negative nine. It goes all the way up to three, negative five, and then down again to six, negative six. So on this part, on the left part, the y coordinate of any point on this function is going to be between negative 9 and negative 5. On this part, the y-coordinate of any point in this function is going to be between negative 6 and, neg and negative 5, an interval that is actually included in this part already. So the furthest down it gets is negative 9, and the farthest up it ever gets is negative 5. And so that's where y is always going to be, between those two things. Okay, like I said, domain and range, pretty easy stuff. Now let's find the function. Okay, first of all, we got to look at this and say, what family does it belong to? It's obviously not linear because it changes direction. And it looks a bit like an inverted V. And any time you have a function that looks like a right-side-up V or an upside-down V, we need to think absolute value. Okay, and the form of an absolute value function is always going to look like y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k, where the vertex is at the point h, k. Okay, so uh, vertex, that's this part right here, 3, negative 5, and a is the slope of the right side of the function. So, um... Let me see, if I want to measure the slope of this function, I would say, what's my change in y, and what's my change in x? y is just going down from negative 5 to negative 6, so that's going down by 1. x is increasing from 3 up to 6, so that's going up by 3. So that means the slope of this is negative 1 third. Okay, that gives us the whole thing, because now we have y equals negative one-third, that's a, x minus h, the, uh, uh, the x-coordinate of the vertex, so that's x minus 3, plus negative 5. I'll just write that as minus 5. And uh, in order for me to feel really good about my, uh, uh, about my function here, let me plug in the points that I see here. I'm going to plug in negative 9, neg negative 9. If I take negative one-third times the absolute value of negative nine minus three minus five. Let's see, negative nine minus three is negative twelve. The absolute value of that is positive twelve, so I get negative one-third times twelve minus five. Negative one-third of twelve is negative four minus five equals negative nine. That's the y-coordinate of my point, so I feel really good about that. And let me just try the, uh, the x-coordinate, six, negative six. If I take negative one-third times the absolute value of 6 minus 3 minus 5, okay, I'm just replacing the uh, x-coordinate with uh, 
the or the x uh, variable with six. Uh, I get six minus three is three. The absolute value of that is still three. So negative one third times three minus five. Negative one third of three is negative one minus five is negative six. And sure enough, that is the y coordinate. So I know that both this point and this point are uh, are on my uh, graph of the function y equals negative one third absolute value of x minus three minus five. And I also know that the vertex is there because it's really built into the function. So I'm feeling real good about this now. There's my function.